Inside this video right here, I'm gonna talk about exactly what you need to know step by step to treat SVT in EMS. Let's talk about it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach I'm back here with another video. We're gonna talk about SVT, but first, if you're new here, hit like and subscribe down below. This right here, this channel, weekly EMS videos on EMS medicine from pre-EMT all the way to paramedic. This is your home right here. Let's dive into it. The first thing we gotta think about, like anything, is gonna be stable or unstable. But before we even get there, and we're gonna talk about that, how do we, what is SVT? So let's talk about what it is. So, SVT is a narrow complex, so narrow QRS complex, okay, remembering we have the P wave, right? We have a QRS T, okay? So this is narrow in the SVT, okay? QRS complex is narrow, okay? It's under, it's under three little boxes. Okay, so it's under 0 0.12, it's under, okay, it's less than 0 0.12 narrow QRS, okay? The rate, I think about the rate as being over 150. So in your brain, I want you to think about 100 to 150, it's size TAC, okay? 150 or higher, SVT. Normally SVT, what it looks like when it comes in the textbooks or even on the field, it's gonna be 170, 180, 190, 200. So, okay? So that's what you're looking at, but technically it was over 150, okay? That's gonna be your SVT, okay? So it's a narrow QRS, but it's over 150. Now, here's the question Is SVT regular or irregular? Here's the big thing about it technically, it's regular, okay? But sometimes SVT, so technically it's regular, okay? But sometimes, SVT, what it stands for is supraventricular tachycardia. Supra means above the ventricles, the impulse starts, in a tachycardia. So sometimes what can happen is a rapid a fibr or a flutter because the heart rate's going so fast, you can't tell that it's a rapid a fib or a flutter because the heart rate's going 210. You couldn't tell if it's regular or irregular, it's 210. It's so fast. So when you give adenosine to that patient, we're gonna talk about it in a little bit, you can see it break and you go, whoa, you hit the print button and you notice, wait a second, this is irregular. I got a rapid A fib in my hands, not an SVT, okay? When we talk about SVT, the first thing we need to talk about is stable versus unstable and what that means. So let's talk about that. So we get SVT. I'm gonna split my screen here, okay? And essentially, the question is, is the patient stable or unstable? Well, how do we know what's a clear-cut way to know a patient is stable or unstable? Okay, the king, the number one on any exam, any test question, but also out in the field is gonna be blood pressure, okay? Then you have two things to think about, okay? Mental status and symptoms. Okay? So this is king. What the blood pressure says on the exam, ACLS, in test, out in the field. If I go to someone SVT and they're, uh, they're 84 over 84 over 60, 84 over 50, yeah, they're unstable. I don't care what you say, they're unstable, okay? They're not perfusing their organs, they're unstable. These are things to think about. Mental status, symptoms. On a test question, you're not gonna think. You're gonna go to your blood pressure in test land. In real life land, you're gonna look at the blood pressure, the mental status, and the symptoms, and you're gonna make a 
clinical decision whether they're stable or unstable. But on test day, whatever the blood pressure says is what it's going to determine, okay? Now, stable versus unstable. Now we know what we're looking at right here, all this stuff, okay? So in stable land, the first thing we're gonna try is something called vagal maneuvers. Okay, so we call them vagals. So, recap, okay? What, it, what are vagals? I'm gonna draw a small circle and put a plug, okay? Remember something. So the vagus nerve plugs into the heart, makes you relax. So if we can do a vagal maneuver, which activates the vagus nerve, which plugs into the heart, the AV node in particular, then we can make that patient relax, okay? Okay, think of the after sex response, okay? It's one of the best ways I've heard it covered, okay? Now, be vagal maneuvers. Now, the first thing about vagal maneuvers is remember, your vagus nerve plugs in to your heart. That vagus nerve slows everything down, gives you that after sex response, okay? Gives you that, I'm so relaxed right now, I don't care. I'm so relaxed right now, okay? What that means is this. If we can do a vagal maneuver and activate, turn on that vagus nerve, what does that mean? We're gonna lower the heart rate that's too high. That's what we tried first. It's also not, not invasive. Tell the patient, hey, bear down like you're, you know, bear down like you're having a bottle movement. Bear down, like really as hard as you can. That's the most practical thing I found in EMS, okay, for vagals, okay? Next, under stable land, let's say that doesn't work, your patient stays stable. We're gonna start an IV, and we're gonna give adenosine, okay? So we're gonna start in the ACs, okay? Curve weight 18 or 20, okay? Bigger the better. Adenosine, six milligrams. Don't forget, you gotta follow it up with a flush right behind it. Okay, normal saline flush. That doesn't work, we try 12 milligrams. Now, here's where everyone gets confused. What do I do next? So what happens with a stable patient, I try vagals, and by the way, I've done this so many times out in the field, so I understand this. You try vagals out in the field, you try six, try 12, it doesn't work. They're still stable. You have more tools in your toolbox. Don't forget you have a beta blocker and a calcium channel blocker. What I believe this goes back to is your SVT might be a rapid AFib, and these meds down here treat that. Your beta blocker is metaprolol. Cardizem is going to be your calcium channel blocker. Usually this dose is about 15 milligrams. This one's about 5 milligrams. Okay? Some places have Cardizem at 0 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. Okay? but I've seen 15 milligrams. Always go in a dose based on your area. I'm giving you just, you know, the general, what I find most common, right? So this is your stable algorithm right here, okay? And obviously, of course, at some point throughout your care, you want to do a 12 week EKG. Again, it's off of the testing zone, just for yourself out in the field, okay? Now, unstable. Unstable, well, think of stable as maneuvers and meds. Okay, think of unstable as shocking. So when I mean shocking, what do I mean? My friends, please remember that we never defib a patient that has a pulse. Patients that are in VTAC or VFib will get defibrillated only when they don't have a pulse. Okay, so we're in SVT right now. That means the patient has a pulse. If they're in SVT, they got a pulse which means they're gonna get synchronized cardioversion. Why? Because if we hit on that half of the T wave, that can cause R on T phenomenon. What that means is we're hitting them with a shock right at that half of the T wave. When we hit that half of the T wave, VTAC ensues. So if you don't want your patient to potentially go into VTAC, this is why everyone recommends you use synchronized cardioversion, okay? So what you gotta do is you gotta sync on the monitor and the first dose is 50 to 100 joules. 
for SVT. Okay? And that's how you do it. Now, to remind you of what these medications do before I go. Adenosine, think about adenosine as, as my old instructor would say, a chemical cardio version. Adenosine is a chemical cardio version. A beta blocker, metaprolol, is going to block the beta receptors. What is that going to do? Think about it. What is that going to do? So a beta blocker, it's going to block the beta receptors, right? That's it. So the beta receptors, well, what's going to block beta 1 or beta 2, this tries to go out to beta 1 to lower the heart rate. That works great. Well, carzen, it's going to block the calcium channels. What's calcium known for? Calcium is known for increasing cardiac contractility. So what if we block the calcium channels? Maybe it'll lower the heart rate. Hey everyone, I really hope you enjoyed that video on SVT Review. Now, if you're one of these three people, click the link in the description down below. I have something that I want to share with you. What it is, is the Paramedic Coach course plus the brand new NREMT Accelerator program. Now, my whole goal at the Paramedic Coach is to find the EMS student as early on as I can in your career. Because I know, as soon as you get your hands on the content inside my program, it will absolutely change your EMS career because it breaks things down simply, concisely, so you can pass school and the NREMT boards on easy mode. But again, don't take it from me. Click on the link down below. You can hear from my students who have gone to the program and passed school and NREMT on easy mode. You can meet them down below in the description. And everyone, I want to thank you for your kind words. Thank you for supporting the channel and subscribing. We have big, big things to come. And I will see you next time. Take care. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these, all these, you know, links inside my brain. And I, I just knew right then and there, um, I have to have this program. I have to have all the information that he's willing to give. I need all of it. I went through it. I, I spent the time and money in other areas, and I'm, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, what I noticed, it, it just I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there, and then I continued reviewing, and I did it for about a month, and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school, and I took that test one time. Not past it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Adults obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like, I wasn't sure how it was going to be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing, two 70 questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time, and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just Quit, which I know a couple of people who have, I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that, and I'm here as a paramedic coach 
to help you achieve that.